Hello everyone, in this video we're going to master OneDrive in 12 minutes. OneDrive is a cloud storage application by Microsoft. If you have a Microsoft 365 account, either personal or business, you already have OneDrive. You have one terabyte of storage that is stored in the cloud by Microsoft, which you can access from any device, anywhere, at any time. Any file that is saved to OneDrive is accessible from your 365 account. To access your OneDrive, you can start from your browser and go to the site of office.com, portal.office.com, onedrive.com, or even outlook.com. As long as you sign into your 365 account, you can access it. Select the app from your account page or select the app launcher to access it. The online version of your OneDrive is accessed from a browser and by signing into your 365 account. Once you access your OneDrive, you'll be brought to a page that looks similar to this. We'll also see how to place your OneDrive on your computer. Along the left hand side, we have the different views that we can access. The My Files view is your file storage location in OneDrive, and where you'll be saving your cloud files. For the most part, you'll also be working within this view. At the top of the view, we have the functions, which we can use to complete actions. Regardless of where you are in OneDrive, the functions will be at the top. These functions will change according to what you have selected. When nothing is selected, we see that we can create new files, folders, and links with the new drop-down menu, upload files and folders, sync our OneDrive to our computer, and create flows. These functions are contextual, so as we select items, they will change accordingly. If we enable a folder by selecting the check mark to the left of the item, you'll notice that the functions change as well, according to the various items that we have selected. From your My Files view, you can create new items and work on them directly within your browser. To create a new file, select the new drop-down menu and select the file type that you want to create. We'll just create a Word document for now, so I'll select Word document. When you create files in your browser, you'll be redirected to that online version of the app. All the Office apps like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and others are accessible from your browser. Just use the app launcher to get to another application. We can work on our file directly within our browser, and because we created it online from OneDrive, it is saved automatically for us. You can change the file name here as well by replacing that name. Once you're done with that file, just close the tab in your browser. Back in our OneDrive, we can see the file we just created already saved to the cloud. You can also upload files and folders from your PC to your OneDrive. Just select Upload, where you can upload a single folder and all the items within it, a file, or even multiple files at once. Select the item you want to upload, I'll choose some files, and then select Open. They'll be uploaded to your OneDrive and accessible within the cloud. Within the My Files view, you can use this online folder like a regular one. You can click on files to access them, and right-clicking them brings up all of the options for that specific item. Remember that when you enable a file, all of the different file options are available at the top of the view and change depending on what you have selected. Before we learn about the other views, it's important for us to learn how to sync our OneDrive to our computer. A synced OneDrive will place it in your file explorer and you'll be able to access your cloud files directly on your computer. This allows you to download only the files you need and gives you access to more space than your computer may have. To sync your OneDrive, have no items selected and simply select sync. A pop-up will appear where you'll need to select open Microsoft OneDrive. You may have to sign into your account, but once you do, your files will be synced to your computer. Open your file explorer and you'll see OneDrive as a location there. The files online and those on your computer are the exact same as one another. They're reflected. We can use this OneDrive folder on our computer as normal files and any changes that we make will automatically be saved to the cloud for us. There are some symbols to be made aware of. Your OneDrive files are accessible on your computer, but that doesn't mean they're immediately on it. The cloud symbol next to a file lets us know that the file is in the cloud and available for us to download to our computer. If we just open that file by double clicking it, it will download to our computer 
and we can work on it from there. Once you open a file on your computer, it will remain on your hard drive, and you can access it even when you're disconnected from the internet. The green check mark next to an item lets you know that the item is actually on your hard drive and accessible without an internet connection. You may be thinking, but I don't want to download individual items by opening them. Not to worry, OneDrive has you covered, and you can right click a file or a folder and select the option of always keep on this device. That will download the items to your computer and make those files accessible. If you maybe wanted to free up some space on your hard drive, you can always right click the item you want to store back into the cloud and select free up space. That will keep it in the cloud, but remove it from your hard drive. Again, this OneDrive folder is just a window into your OneDrive or another way to access it. So how do we save files to our OneDrive? If you're working on any file on your computer and your OneDrive is synced to it, we can save directly to our OneDrive. That will allow us to access those files from anywhere we sign into our OneDrive. I have an Excel sheet open and to save it to OneDrive, I can select File, then Save As. We can see our OneDrive location directly within our Microsoft apps. Here's my OneDrive. Just make sure you're signed into the application. I can navigate to a location within my OneDrive directly in the app, enter a file name, and select Save. I can also select Browse to navigate to the place within my OneDrive and select Save that way. Once your file is saved to OneDrive, any changes that you make to the file will automatically save to the cloud. Don't worry, if you don't have internet, it will save to your PC and as soon as you connect back to the internet, all of your changes will be uploaded and synced to the cloud. Now that we know the basics of OneDrive, let's learn a few more things. I'm back within the online version of OneDrive. We can share our files and folders with other people so that they can access it alongside us. This is real line editing, so just remember that when you share a file, those users get access to your actual files and not a copy. You can share a file or a folder in the same way. If you share a folder, the person you share with gets access to everything within that folder with the same permissions, so keep that in mind. Enable the item you want to share and then select share from the ribbon. We're providing users with a link to access our files. The first thing we need to do is set the link permissions. Select the box at the top. These options will look different depending on a number of things, though the general options will be the same. There's a few types of links that we can create. If you want, you can allow anyone to access this file by using this link. Just keep in mind that if people you share with post that link online somewhere, anyone who clicks it can access your content. If you have a business account, we can make this link work for only people in your company by selecting this options or refresh someone's access and even share it with specific people. When you share with specific people, only those specific users will be able to access the content. Once you select a user type, we have to decide if they can edit the content or not. Use the enable option here to determine that, then select apply. We'll be brought back to our original share screen. Enter the email or emails you want to share the link with and an accompanying message. Then select send. Great, those users will receive an email and you'll be able to edit your files together. But how do we manage the people within our shared content? That's where the shared view comes into play. We'll select it to access it. In your shared view, you have two tabs. You can access every single file or folder that has been shared with you in every piece of content that you've shared. Use the Shared With You tab to access other users' files and folders that they've shared with you. You don't need to dig through your email. Click the Shared By You tab to see all the content you're currently sharing with others. You can manage content that you are sharing easily. Enable the item you want to manage and then select Manage Access. You'll see a pane appear and all of the links you're currently using to share with others. Select the ellipsis to see who has access or who has used that link. From here, we can delete the link by just selecting the exit option. Then select confirm from the pop-up. 
That's how easy it is to manage your files and shared content. Let's learn a few more things before we wrap up. I'll head back to the My Files view. OneDrive automatically saves version history for you, which you can access and restore. To access version history on files, and this only works on files, enable the item, and then select the ellipsis from the ribbon, then version history. A pane will appear, and you'll see all of the versions for that file. The greater the number, the more recent the version. Every time you open and change the file, then save it, it creates a brand new version. You can select the ellipsis next to a version to delete it, open and view it, as well as restore it to the most up-to-date version. I'll close that down. Lastly, you can always delete your OneDrive items by enabling them, selecting delete, and then confirming from the pop-up. When you delete files, folders, or versions, they're placed within the recycle bin view for 30 days. On day 31, they're gone and non-recoverable. Until day 31, we can access our recycle bin view to see all the items we have deleted, where we can enable them to then select restore, which will place the item back where it once was. The item will always go back to where it previously was. So if it was a version, folder, or file, you can always go back to your files view and access it in its original location before you deleted it. That was just a quick summary of OneDrive in about 12 minutes. We covered the basics, but there is a lot you can do with OneDrive. Let us know in the comments what videos you'd like to see, and don't forget to like and subscribe to see more content like this.